Hi, I've been coming up Otley Shevin pretty well every day now for well over 20 years. But during lockdown, when everything else in my life has been on hold, uh, this has been my saving grace. It's just been beautiful. It's been like this most of the time in actual fact. And the sound of birdsong has been almost deafening. So I thought it would be fitting to introduce myself and my music from up here. Uh, I'm going to make the recordings at home, um, which is problematic in itself because unfortunately one of our dogs, who you can maybe see in the background there, insists on singing along whenever I play my guitar. So I've got to find somewhere which is out of earshot for him. Um, <laughs> in practice in the house that means recording in our attic, uh, which doubles up as our box room um, and it's piled out with stuff so I, I apologize in advance for that if, if the conditions allow then I'll try and do some of the recording outside so we'll see how we go now as for the music itself I've been playing the guitar on and off for about 50 years I was entirely self-taught so I've developed a playing style all of my own um, it sort of works and it's far too late to change now. But about 20 years ago I started writing instrumental music of my own. Uh, most of it's inspired by my love of nature and of wild spaces and in some cases events that have shaped my life. Uh, now this first piece is actually dedicated to the memory of one of my closest friends. Um, we went all the way up through school together from the uh, late 60s through the 70s. He had a brilliant mind, but he was very eccentric and that rubbed some people up the wrong way, unfortunately. But he had a heart of gold, really. Uh, at the age of 18, we went our separate ways. He inevitably went to Oxford and then stayed on to do a PhD. I went to Liverpool and then on up to Dundee. And those miles between us meant that for far too long I was unaware of just how sad and troubled he'd become. And in the end he completely lost his way and passed away far, far too young. Um, now the piece itself, it, it has no repeating theme. Rather it's uh, a journey as life is itself with twists and turns and changes of mood before reaching a final melancholic refrain. Um, it's a bittersweet piece for me because uh, not only is it about a friend I lost, but it's also brought home to me how fortunate I've been by comparison. Um, life can sometimes change on small choices that we make, and mine changed forever when I overcame my shyness to get to know a lovely young woman called Jo, who lived in Otley. And the rest, as they say, is history. And the piece itself is called A Life in Three Minutes.
Hi again. For a lot of years our family had a caravan, first in the Yorkshire Dales and then up in the Lake District, and I think that's probably the main reason why I developed my love of nature. In more recent times I used to particularly love sitting out at the back of the caravan in the woods playing my guitar with the birds singing all around me and that's where I wrote this next piece which is inspired by my favourite time of year which is bluebell time. We have lots of bluebell woods around here. Uh, there's a particularly famous one at Middleton Woods on the outskirts of Ilkley and it's just amazing. It's like a blue haze that goes on forever. But it isn't just bluebells, there's lots of other wildflowers as well. There's wild garlic, there's jack by the hedge, wood anemones, stitchwort, uh, red campion, just to name some. And all of those different colours set against the wonderful fresh green leaves on the trees with the birds singing, uh, the smells and the shafts of sunlight coming through. It's like a sensory overload, it's just a wonderful time to be in the woods. Here on the Chevin the bluebells tend to be at their best in May and for that reason I've called the piece May Days. I should explain I've added some video footage and some bird song that I've recorded in the last few weeks to this particular video and I, I hope you enjoy it. Okay.
In 2006, we went on holiday to Andalusia in southern Spain and stayed in the, the Alpajaras, which are on the southern slopes of the Sierra Nevada mountains, a beautiful place. But on the way there from Malaga Airport, we stopped off at a, an amazing limestone mountain called Tocal. It's justifiably famous for its amazing rock formations, but also for the extraordinary diversity of, of flowering plants that, that take root anywhere they can. It's just stunning. On the day we went there, unfortunately the cloud was down, but in some ways it added to the atmosphere. And uh, when we arrived at our destination, I wrote this piece with a slightly flamenco feel to it, uh, and it's called El Torquel.
Over the years I spent a lot of time up in the hills and mountains of Britain. When I lived in Dundee I quite often used to walk miles up onto the high plateau of the Grampians which I shared with some pretty unique wildlife. And then more recently as a fell runner when I was training for the York's Three Peaks race I used to cover miles up on the moors and the fells of Upper Wharfdale and I found that was a great way of reaching some really beautiful wild places that I would never otherwise have seen. But of course when you spend a lot of time out on the hills inevitably sometimes you encounter some really lousy weather and uh, this piece is actually inspired by being caught out in a blizzard which happened to me a couple of times. It's really quite intimidating and you feel so exposed when you're out all alone. Uh, when you're at high altitude obviously the snow settles very quickly so you quickly lose sight of the path it becomes very difficult to judge distances and it doesn't matter which way you look the snow seems to be coming in your face it just swirls all around you and it's very disorientating and hopefully this uh, piece captures that it's called North Wind Coming Just to prove that the sun doesn't always shine here in Otley, I'm afraid it's raining this morning. I'm going to finish off with a couple of pieces where I use a partial capo which recreates the dadgad sound with a guitar in standard tuning. The first piece is one that I wrote very recently, just a couple of months ago, while I was reflecting on the fact that my mum had contracted the COVID-19 virus. My mum's in the late 80s, she has underlying health issues, and uh, we therefore had every reason to worry that we might never see her again. As it is at the time of recording this on June the 7th, she is still with us, but the virus has taken so much out of her that it remains to be seen whether she'll ever really fully recover. So we're just keeping our fingers crossed. The second piece is about my favorite place in the whole world, which is Westeros and Sutherland in Northwest Scotland. In fact, this piece was written 
on the last night of a holiday up there a few years ago. I've written a lot on my Facebook music page about why I love the place so much. But in essence, it's about the beauty of the place, the amazing wildlife, and the fact that I've always been able to find peace of mind up there. Now, I've included some video footage, a slideshow, uh, and uh, uh, one or two bird recordings. And right at the end, you'll hear the sound of the red-throated diver. Um, it's a sound that, for me, is so evocative of that part of the world. But it's not a sound I've been, ever been able to capture myself because you've got to be in the right place at the right time. But fairly recently I managed to get hold of a, a, a guy called Andrew Harrop, an ornithologist who specialises in capturing bird sounds. He had a recording and he's kindly allowed me to use it on this piece. The first piece is called Holding On and the second one is called Haste Me Back.
Well, that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed listening to the music, and I also hope that you enjoy the rest of the music that's on show tonight. And please come back in future months, because there'll be more. Um, and please also, if you can afford it, consider making a donation to our good causes via the GoFundMe link. But for now, thanks for listening. Bye.